In this video we're going to talk about the actual naming rules for Scala because we are going to apply some of these naming rules that are not necessarily valid in other languages to some of the methods that we have created. So in the code that we wrote, I'll look at the immutable version, we named our methods and our uh, member data using just standard uh, letter names. And in most programming languages, you get to make names with a combination of letters, numbers, and underscores, and it has to start with a letter or an underscore. So we've seen things like underscore x. We could have you know abc123. Those would be valid names inside of most programming languages, and they're also valid inside of Scala. But Scala allows a few other things that most programming languages don't. You can also have names that are made completely of operator symbols. So the operator symbols that are allowed in for naming in Scala are of course plus and minus, you would expect those types of things, multiply, divide, the percent sign which is used for modulo, um, the pipe which was part of or, the and, uh, ampersand which is used as and, the caret which is an standardly used as an XOR, there is also a, an exclamation point, which is typically used for the Boolean not, less than, greater than, an equals comparison, the question mark, which in Java or C would have been for a ternary operator. You're allowed to use the dollar sign. You're allowed to use a back divide, and you're allowed to use a colon. You can make any combination of these into a name, and it is a valid Scala name. So you can do something like that. Notice there's no error there. That's a horrible thing to, to name a, a method, but it is allowed. Okay. In addition to having purely symbolic names, you can also have names that start off with a normal name, like ABC, and then followed by an underscore, and then symbolic names. And that's also an allowed name. So those are two types of names that Scala allows that you wouldn't normally get in other programming languages. Why are those allowed? Well, for something like this that is really a mathematical class, it's very unfortunate to have to add these two values using plus. Now, I didn't do this before, but technically we could have done this because as we've talked about, any method that takes a single argument can be used uh, in an infix notation. But you really don't want to say plus here, you want to say plus. You, you want a plus sign, that's, that's what we're used to reading. And indeed, because of the symbolic names, Scala allows us to change plus and minus to those. The scaling was just a multiply. And that's happy code. So now we can say things like v1 plus v2. I could have said v2 times 8. And that would have uh, multiplied v, all the elements of v2 by 8 and then added that in. So you can use these symbolic names in this type of example. What about for the mutable vector? Turns out I really don't want this plus to just be a plus because remember down here this is actually mutating it and if I say v1 plus v2 that doesn't look like it's changing v1. This would be extremely hard to read. What I was doing there was really what we're used to seeing as plus equals. Fortunately I can write this method as plus equals. I can write this method as minus equals. And then the scale would be a times equals. Basically, I can make these methods the same names for what we were using in here to modify the scalars. And then when we write code, it's it looks like you would expect it to for normal numeric values, for example. Okay. The word of caution here, though, is that you should only do this when 
the names that you are using, as I said, you, you could pick some really, really bad names. Don't do that. The names that you pick need to have meaning. Okay? It needs to be meaningful to whoever is looking at your code. If they can't figure out what you're doing, then that's going to cause a lot of, of headaches. If you have something that's kind of like plus, but it's not exactly plus, don't call it plus. Um, if you want, and there could be reasons why you want this, we'll bring that up in the next video, maybe you would call it plus plus. Okay? And there are some places in the Scala libraries, for example, the collections, where they use an, a plus plus operator to, to do stuff. So this video showed you how you can use symbolic names in Scala. Scala has a basically more open naming convention. And for mathematical constructs like our 2D vectors, you can make good use of that. And it allows you to write code that will be more meaningful to a lot of your readers.